tell me please, which feelings do you get from this guitar melody? I personally feel anxiety and loneliness. But not the alone in my apartment kind of loneliness. No, I feel like I'm alone in the whole wide world and there's absolutely no escape. But you have to fight. You have to search for something that'll help you overcome this persistent feeling. And that's exactly what the protagonists of one of the best games of modern history choose to do. The Last of Us. Today, we will try to figure out what's the secret behind this zombie action, which have managed to convince even the untempted public that video games truly are art. But before we go on, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button. This will help us a lot in the development of the channel. Thank you. You are on an island of civilized internet designated dramatic. We don't know how many more of these are out there, so we don't advise you to leave. At least not for the next 20 minutes. We invite you on a trip into script theory, accompanied by a certain amount of game designing rules from the Naughty Dog developer company and lots of good music. So much work, so little time, which is why I suggest that we start. If someone tells you that The Last of Us is an overrated game that has nothing revolutionary in it, then you safely can, I don't know, but don't insult him. That's an uncouth thing to do. And we are all men of culture here. Better ask this individual, what does he think about the game's plot? After all, the story told by Neil Druckmann and his crew is an example of how a classic cinematic scheme can be adapted into interactive art. The fun thing about video games and movies is that their narratives are constructed differently. There was this guy, Joseph Campbell. He studied myths, folklore and stuff like that. So he noticed that myths from different cultures have something in common. Joseph dissected some fables and ballads and got the building blocks of story and character development, character archetypes, and so on. He uncovered elements that hooked listeners, viewers or gamers, making them listen, watch or play without stopping. He later shared his reflections in form of a book called The Hero with a Thousand Faces. To this day, it is considered by many to be a methodological guide for an aspiring writer. But if this domain truly interests you, I advise reading The Writer's Journey by Christopher Vogler, less rambling and much more comprehensible. However, neither of books applied to video games. The script for interactive projects, although it focuses on the character and its development, has to function a little differently because of that very interactivity. It doesn't need a long explanation of the protagonist's motivation or detailed disclosure of his psychology, because the player is the protagonist. A video game script has to stick to the logic of a classic narrative, while simultaneously providing dynamics. As Chris Avalon once justly said, best school for a video game scriptwriter is game mastering. When you're hosting a Dungeons & Dragons game as the game master. The point is that you get immediate feedback. The players will tell you whether they like how you're structuring the adventure or not. Thus, you develop the skill to put together a coherent story using little dynamic blocks that shape up depending on how the situation is playing out. And that's the essence of a video game script. It's not holistic, it's segmented. For the sake of greater dynamism, it is often deprived of moments that are crucial to get the player attached to the protagonist. In Vogler's formula, for example, there is a step called the refusal of the call to adventure, where something encourages the protagonist to begin his journey, but he ponders whether he should, 
and then decides to refuse. This is essential to show how greatly the character values his comfort zone and thereby bring him closer to the viewer or reader. In a video game, such techniques only slow down the pace of the narrative. That's why there is much less room to show the main character from his human side. But The Last of Us is an interesting case. Not only do the authors find occasions to introduce this element, but the whole game develops in compliance with the classic movie structure without losing any interaction or dynamism. Hard to believe, but have you seen how people react to its plot twists? Oh, she still thinks there's a chance for a cure. I swear. God damn it, Joel. Oh, Joel, seriously? Yikes, my Andy. <gasps> no way! Or how many millions of views are there on the full playthrough with cutscenes? The game is very cinematic, and this applies not only to its looks and staging of non-gameplay moments. Let's take the very beginning for an example. In first minutes, you play as the main character's daughter named Sarah. Thanks to the element of exploring the girl's room, we are able to understand her hobbies and learn more about her relationship with her father, Joel. Their affinity is shown even earlier, when the daughter presents her father with a wristwatch, making jokes on unchildish topics. It means that the family lives in a friendly ambience based on mutual understanding and support. This is the ordinary world stage, followed by the call to adventure stage, which warns of upcoming events. Here it is revealed through a distressing TV report, followed by an explosion outside the window. You can clearly see that something disturbing is going on. The third, previously mentioned stage is masterfully skipped by the developers. Instead, they show an action moment with an infected neighbor. Character's motivation is clear. They need to survive and the time is running out. The protagonists get in the car and head out from the city. Here, the developers touch base on the fourth stage, meeting the mentor, represented by Joel. In a critical situation, he changes his paradigm of behavior and does something that Sarah wasn't expecting him to. He doesn't take strangers into the car, although they are clearly in trouble to save his dearest. In a moment, we witness another action sequence and the player is shown a shocking cutscene, which marks the failure to pass the fifth stage, crossing the threshold. What happened? Well, I'm sure you already know. Before she can begin her survival in the new world, Sarah dies in her father's arms. Don't do this to me, baby. Don't do this to me, baby. Come on. We have to keep in mind just how people responded to this scene. This is what the whole narrative of the video game is based on. Last of Us uses the classic pattern of character development within each of its story blocks, using them to describe the supporting characters, but leaving most space to the protagonists. The stories of the brothers Henry and Sam, or Cannibal David and his gang, all end with an unexpected ending or a complex, controversial choice that either main or supportive characters have to make. It's all your fault! Henry! Henry, no! <coughs> and what's great about such an approach is that each segment, as it should be in a video game, pursues an ultimate goal, portraying the characters of Joel and Ellie that the player will be presented with at the end of the game. Compare these people 
to the ones you've met in the beginning, they can't be more different from each other. But most importantly, we care for them. The game abounds with gorish and violent scenes, but there are many heartfelt moments as well, which only makes the connection even stronger. Perhaps that's why, when Joel makes a fateful decision for the whole world, we can understand him, even though it's extremely hard to forgive him. Don't come any closer. I mean it. There is nothing revolutionary about the gameplay and the level design of the game. Yes, I have the courage to say that. I mean, why to build up suspense if there is no point? The advantages of Naughty Dog's game design are its simplicity and comprehensibility. The thing is that the developers have set such rules of level creation and design that even if some newbie decides to try out one of their games, he will likely have no issues with understanding where to go and which button to press. Here's an example. The game's level designer, Amelia Schatz, has admitted that some parts of the location were intentionally made smoother by the developers. No sharp edges, dimmed light, calm music. Thus, the gamer is told that he can lower his guard and explore the surroundings while other parts of the location are made more rigid. Scattered trash, piles of rubble, suspicious noises. All this is designed to alert the player and prepare him for an imminent brawl. With the help of light and color, the developers create an environment where even an inexperienced player quickly finds the right path. Let's take the beginning of the game as an example. In order to show the right way on a semi-open location where the main characters find themselves after the car crash, the developers paint the right way using light and alleys. At the end of the segment, to make sure that the player finds the right way, they also add an eye-catching element, yellow cordon tape. Naughty Dog like yellow in all its shades which is why they use it quite often to mark the correct way, while trying not to break the in-game logic so that this part of the environment doesn't look alien. The previously mentioned cordon tapes actually fit the situation, as they are used to cover a hole in the fence. It's easy to believe that in reality such a hole would have been taped the same way. Although, of course, developers leave many conventionalities nonetheless, which bends the minds of those who decide to play a video game for the first time. Channeled Cold Rasputin can provide us with a good example. A guy gave the joystick to his wife, who had zero gaming experience, and observed how she deviated more and more from the developer's plan. However, her behavior showed some holes in the game design, and if we're talking about Naughty Dog, it was a small section of the sidewalk free of fire. Driving for authenticity, the developers did not put fire all over the available area, hoping that the player will notice other direction signs and use his wit. But as it turned out, the path was still unclear to some people. What does it mean? It means that Naughty Dog's level design is easy to understand, but only if you already have at least some gaming experience. Otherwise, you can get stuck so badly that any story will fade into the background. More or less, the same can be said about the action part of the game. There are no overly complicated bosses. The mechanics of eliminating human or zombie enemies are clear and quickly memorized. The in-game crafting system pushes you to explore thus combining combat and exploration. And conventionalities like limited ammo forces the player to stay sharp, echoing the setting and atmosphere. But again, it all works only if you already know how to use a gamepad, because lots of QTE sequences will spoil all the experience 
for those who wield dual sense for the second time in their life. Not saying that the game is full of flaws, in fact, quite the opposite. The Last of Us has enough mechanics and features to not be considered casual while remaining fairly simple. As a result, we have a game that will please the largest possible number of players with all possible skill levels. And this is also a part of the game's phenomenality. Its story is incredibly compelling and the characters are extremely well developed. That's why you want to keep playing. And the game does not prevent you from doing so. It keeps a perfect balance between casualness and hardcore, which allows it to bring tons of joy even gameplay-wise. <laughs> The Last of Us was interesting not only because of what we've listed above, but also because of the position from which the game presented the then boring setting of a zombie apocalypse. Neil Druckmann's masterpiece used the unpopular image of a green post-apocalypse, when there's not a nuclear wasteland around you, but flowers and greenery growing on the skyscraper tops. And now, a question from a child's quiz. Mm, do you know what else grows and where exactly? Mushrooms on people, that's what. But most importantly, they are scientifically accurate mushroom plantations that grow on people. Cordyceps, have you heard of it? An existing genus of ascomycete fungi that afflicts small insects like ants, makes them climb high enough by gaining control over their primitive consciousness and then kills them by sprouting through their entire body the moment the poor fella finds a place suitable for the fungus to spread its spores. And so, in the game this peculiar parasite has mutated and is now using animals with a much more complex brain, humans as its victims. But you know what's funny? In theory, such a course of events is possible. Prepare for a bit of a scientific stuff found on the internet. Cordyceps is a heterotrophic plant, which means it obtains all the necessary nutrients from the organism in which it parasitizes. It doesn't really require any light, taking into account that over time it has learned to afflict bees as well. Well guys, there's a good chance that we humans will also suffer a great deal from it. Thus, it's this detail that strikes a chord in us. It's like the game is pondering about the future. It doesn't come up with a fantastic concept from whole cloth, but rather speculates on a very thing which makes you take the game seriously. The music also contributes to this impression. Two-time Academy Awards winner Gustavo Santaolalla provided a very aesthetic yet profound soundtrack dominated by guitar. It is accompanied by brass and occasionally drums, but most often you can hear echoes of the perishing urban world, you can hear the scraping of metal, industrial sounds, human footsteps and eerie inhuman howls. The game's sound is a whole other layer of its atmosphere, which is simply impossible not to mention when talking about the secret of the game's success. But what is the secret really? It's how all of the above intertwines and complements each other, with a little cherry on top of course. But we'll get to that cherry in the very end of this video, for now let's have a look at what we've got so far. An intriguing story with clear motivation and conflict, well developed characters and great chemistry between them. The Last of Us offers a moving dramatic story with complex characters and no less complex choices. The protagonists mature and develop, while the way they interact with people around them and the world in general gives a great insight of their philosophy. At the end, we see completely different people, which means we have shared with them an important, life-changing experience what only makes us empathize even more. The game's story unfolds in compliance with classic cinematic tropes. This makes it easy to take for the absolute majority of players, even those whose gaming experience 
is rather modest. This also fosters audience growth, but it's vital to cover the element that made it possible to use a movie's guidebook on a video game. The game design of the development studio. The developers from Naughty Dog construct such a game space that even the dummiest dummy of gaming quickly gets the hang of it. For example, climbable ledges and cliffs are marked with yellow, a hint that doesn't stand out against the scenery. The developers competently use every environmental element to mark the right path and not form a false image. Birds fly in a direction where the player should look if he wants to do the exploring. Cars or flames block the passage where it's necessary. Of course, all of this does not completely save you from any struggles. Total beginners can easily get confused within first minutes. However, if you learn the game's nuances, everything will go smoothly and without serious problems. After all, in terms of gameplay, it offers a fair degree of freedom. It's up to you to either kill zombies silently or spend all your ammo. That is, the player is free to choose his own pace. An even greater role in the game's phenomenality was played by its external appeal and cinematic nature. The exoticism of the game space was quite attractive as the green apocalypse was an unusual style then and still is now. Although now there are much more cases, hi there Horizon Zero Dawn, the real challenge is to show this post-apocalyptic world in a way so that the player sees something else besides lettuce green mess. Here we have to give credit to some great optimization done by Naughty Dog and to their handy software engineers who coped with the non-trivial system of PlayStation 3 and thus created the precedent. In terms of graphics, the game stood out a lot and drew the attention even of those who back in 2013 still had the image of Sega pixel games stuck in their heads. What else can be said if even today The Last of Us looks quite decent in its initial iteration? Now, let's add the sound to the visuals. The Last of Us is one of those cases where the composer fully conveys the title's mood using minimum means. Its expressiveness made the game positively stand out against many other titles. For instance, the main theme spent quite some time in my playlist. And the funniest thing is that I first heard it on YouTube 10 years ago, loved it, and only then had I found out it was the soundtrack of the game all gamers have been buzzing about for months. Then I gave in, jumped on the hype train and gave it a shot. As you can probably tell, I have no regrets. But I was among the lucky ones because only the chosen ones were allowed to try out the title. It's finally time to talk about the cherry that gave the game the scent of elitism. Last of Us could only be played on the PlayStation 3 console. I've mentioned this a bit vaguely before, but it's worth elaborating because the game was the title that was literally selling the console. And what does it mean? It means that Sony console owners were shouting about the game everywhere they could. Comics, cosplay, stories from the game, impressions and ecstatic reviews all struck the internet like a tsunami and no one from the gamer community was able to avoid getting at least a drop of it on themselves. Fame of The Last of Us was growing, critics and users were increasing its rating, while the game helped the sales of the Japanese technical wonder. I mean, literally, really, wonder? My ass, do you even know what was going on with its processors? To this day, they can't make them backwards compatible. <laughs> okay, okay, that's a topic for another video, which we might do a bit later. For now, we are done with the Last of Us phenomenon. Its secret lies in the professionalism of its developers. Simplistic controls, masterful staging, memorable artwork, well-developed world, deep characters, and a story full of complex choices. The Last of Us jumped on the leading hype train of zombie theme and gave it a new life. 
largely because the game didn't focus on zombies, but on people in dire straits. And this is always fascinating to follow, even though sometimes what we see devastates us. The game's finale was no exception. Swear to me that everything that you've said about the fireflies is true. I swear. What's not devastating is our videos, quite the opposite. They raise your spirits and give you motivation to live on, because there, beyond the horizon, are new videos. And while they are yet to see the light of day, please leave a like, subscribe, smash the bell button and leave a comment. Stay tuned.